That was just for you to set the levels, just so you know. That's, uh, welcome to Dialogue 101. I have been asked to uh, request that you guys move up and into the centers of the rows so that Johnny Come Lately's can occupy the aisle seats. Now. <laughs> so once again, hello. 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 Thank you. <sighs> We've got a lot of ground to cover, so I am going to start. Is that okay with you? Good? Yes, yeah, good. Here's an overview of what we're going to do. I'm going to approach this session from the assumption that you have been tasked with getting voices into your game, and you said you knew how. <laughs> Don't panic. Dialogue is really fun at some point. Uh, here is a high-level overview of what we're going to be going through. Uh, hopefully, by some miracle, we'll have enough time for a lot of Q&A, which is my favorite part. So this is me. It's not super important. Uh, I founded a company called Bright Skull about a year ago. Before that, I was the, uh, the audio lead in charge of Dialogue at 2K. Uh, Marin, I did uh, Bioshock 2, Minerva's Den, XCOM, The Bureau, and uh, most recently, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. I'm um, also a dad. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Two kids. Public school. <laughs> um, uh, recovering musician, uh, amateur magician, a motorcycle enthusiast. Uh, that's me, in a nutshell. Not important. What is important is pre-production. Get that in your heads, pre-production. It's important. Uh, before you can begin, you need to gather lots of metrics and provide data for your team and for yourself and your development partners. So the first thing I do when I approach a new project is to run analytics on the scripts and extract a lot of data. Uh, in case you're wondering, this is not the fun part I spoke of. Duh. Here's an example of the end results of a script uh, analytics that I ran recently. Well, it's a mock-up that I made just for this, so clearly uh, these are not real character names. Uh, pay attention to the slides, man. There's some good ones in there. <laughs> but the, this is all data that I use to forecast budgeting and, uh, and casting information. Uh, so... These columns over here are a list of every character that speaks a line in the project and any relevant data that I might need for casting them. Uh, in this example, you'll see the sex, the age, the accent, the unique code used in the scripts to identify that character. It's also uh, usually the same code that's used in Engine, uh, which we're not even going to delve into. I don't even know why I said that. Uh, these columns here are the sum total of all of the lines uh, that character speaks in the game, divided up by, in this case, level. Uh, it could also be by, um, by stage or mission or however else your game is broken down. The hell? Jeez. Oh, uh, I'm going to try and get through this without cursing. I don't think I messed up already, but whatever. <laughs> so I break it out like this uh, on purpose, uh, not just because I really love data. It's because um, when I'm casting the game, I need to see how much space I have in between, uh, in, in between uh, each character's appearance in the game in case we're going to double up an actor on multiple voicings for a role, which happens often in video games. But you don't want to have, you know, one dude voicing the same NPC in the same level or even if you can avoid it in back-to-back -back levels. Um, also, I'm from New York, so when I say dude, I also mean women dudes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> this column here is the sum total count for all systemic or combat dialogue. This gets handled separately uh, for engine reasons, but also most importantly in casting and in, uh, in metric uh, uh, analysis because uh, systemic lines are usually about four words per line on average, and narrative content is usually about... 12 to 20 words per line, so it skews the, uh, the actual line count uh, that you will tally up later. I'll probably show you that even. Uh, finally, once all that information is gathered, I can make a really loose high-level prediction for how I'm going to cast the game uh, based on that data. So that's pretty much what the early analysis is. Now, real quick before I move on, every developer has a different way of doing scripts. Um, Excel scripts are really good for this, but really bad for other things. And if you get a Word document script, the little pro tip that I'm going to hand you is I use find and replace uh, to do my line counts. 
And what I'll do is I'll do an uh, specific uh, all caps find and replace to find the uh, to find the character name in the line headings if it's theatrically formatted, and that gives me a good sense of the line count in a in a rough estimate. Also, I use the highlight highlight tool to replace that so that I can easily look through the script and see if I've missed any. Um, hope that wasn't, but uh, yeah. So now that I have all that data, I bring it into this second page in a workbook. I don't know if uh, you guys have heard me talk before about how much Excel is used in game development, but one of the number one questions I get beyond, how did you break into video games, is what software should I learn? Excel. Learn Excel. Learn Excel! Excel Sior. Uh, <laughs> all right. So now you have all the data, you can project budgets for time and money, which is what your producer wants to know, uh, and lots of other people, I'm sure, including yourself. Uh, these rows and columns here are the totals for uh, total split down by actor, which we're able to parse with our early casting data uh, for all the lines uh, and uh, for all the lines in the game. Uh, displaying the data like this allows us to see how many total lines we have and then also allows us to see how much estimated time in the booth it's going to take each actor. And from that, we can extrapolate the estimated cost per actor. Um, some general guidelines to think about. Uh, Where's that arrow? No more arrows. Union actors, uh, you're going to want to budget $890.23 per actor. I usually round up to 1000 That cost is uh, the union fee for actor in a four-hour session block. What that means is you get four hours of actor time. You can use 10 minutes, or you can use three hours and 59 minutes and 59 seconds, and you're still going to pay $890.23. It's not actually eight ninety twenty three, but that includes the 10% agency fee on top in case any of you are union people going, that's not right, but it is. Uh, <laughs> for non-union actors, you want to budget $200 per hour with a two-hour minimum. Uh, so that means that when you book a non-union actor, you're going to be paying $400, and then every hour after that is $200 uh, per hour. Uh, you always round up. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, now, studios generally cost $200 per hour. Uh, that would be good VO studios in major cities. Uh, smaller cities and uh, lesser studios might be less expensive. Uh, you might also be booking a, like the, you know, the presidential suite uh, at POP, and it might be a little bit more, um, which is an awesome room, by the way. It's not called the presidential, it's called the ADR stage. But if you call it the presidential suite, it just sounds cooler. Um, this fee generally includes the, uh, the engineer, the room, the coffee, the snacks, the massage table, the foot rubs. Only some of those things are true. I'll let you figure out which, uh, <laughs> and most studios bill by the half day or the full day, uh, rate. So now that you know how many actors you need, it's time to find them. The casting process breaks down into three really, really intuitive steps. You have making casting materials. You have auditioning the talent, and then you make your selections. Um, casting sides. This is a term that we use to, uh, to describe the bio and uh, sample lines that we send out to the actors. They contain information about the character. Um, and uh, I'm going to bestow upon you some quick tips for writing casting sides, because this is an art form unto itself, which I don't feel many of us have from reading other people's casting sides. <laughs> casting sides should be short one to two pages maximum that's the upper limit for you mathematicians uh the character information should be succinct focused and most importantly useful to the actors uh they do not need to know that the character has a twin brother who later in the game becomes your mother who is also your father and <laughs> It's a crazy story. What they do need to know is that the character is male, 30 years old, Caucasian, grizzly, gravelly, bitter, and has a slight Texas twang. That's a lot of adjectives in a short little space. That's what people need. Uh, give the actors the ammunition they need to give you good reads. Um, think about it from the actor's point of view, which I don't know if many of you have had privy to, but uh, sometimes the actor will be in the studio once a week, and that will be their audition day. They will have a stack of auditions, about 
Yay! Hi. Uh, you give them the writer's version of the casting sides, and it's four pages long of bio. It's not getting read, man. <laughs> All right. Um, when choosing your sample lines, pick good ones. That's some great advice there, right? Uh, you don't need to hear every dramatic moment that's going to appear in your video game. What you do need to hear, though, is the emotional range of content that your actor is going to be performing. So, do they have a lot of dramatic reads? Do they also have some witty one-liners? Maybe some death? Maybe some gloating? You want to make sure that you have the full extent of the palette in there. And in fact, if you think that that character might change, write some fake stuff in there. Which uh, goes, to, uh, goes to another point of mine, um, which uh, apparently I'm going to get to in a minute. Sorry. If it's a first-person shooter or a real-time strategy or any other game that includes combat, always include deaths and combat in your sides. You would be amazed at how many actors are not competent at combat VO. Great at dramatic reads, and then you put them in your game, and then you go get them in your combat section, and it sounds like this. <laughs> I did a session once, and I'm not, I'm not lying to you. The, lead, the main character, we finished all his dramatic stuff, and this is one of my, very early in my career, and, uh, and I did not do the casting. The, uh, the read came out, oof, eep, ah. <laughs> it's a Broadway actor, very famous, and that was what we got. So we had to do a stand-in. Um, so here's my advice to you. Even if the character in your game currently does not become a combatant or die, still have them do combat and deaths, even if they stink at them. Trust me, you'll thank me someday with beer. <laughs> uh, so this is my final pro tip on, uh, on casting sides. Uh, casting sides are not going to generate shippable content. What they are going to generate are auditions for you to cast off of. It is very important to remember that. Uh, you do not have to use accurate character descriptions. You do not have to use accurate lines. You can write whatever you want and the actor will say it. Uh, what you want to do is inform the actor with the tools that they need to give you the audition that you want. That is is important and it's important for you to bring back to your writers and producers if they give you guff give them to me and i will fist a cuff i don't know what that means but it felt good <sighs> all right uh so now you have everything you need to find your voice talent great where do you find the actors well you can start with agencies great place to start uh caveat with agencies if you don't already know not every talent agency represents voice actors uh, a lot of them represent on-screen talent or they represent theatrical actors. Uh, you are looking specifically for agencies that represent voice talent that does interactive and or animation. Not commercial, not radio, interactive or animation. Make sure that those agencies that you're working with do that. Uh, another thing that you want to... Uh, yeah, no, that's good. That's, that, that's all you need to know. <laughs> Casting directors are also great resources. Uh, they have very large pools of talent that are pre-vetted. Uh, and more importantly than, uh, than agencies and yourselves, if you're not already experienced, is that they already have a network of people. So they have access to people that you do not uh, if you're wor even if you're working on a non-union project, this is true. We can oftentimes get celebrity VO talent that uh, may or may not be uh, using a different name. But they won't do it for you. They'll do it for people that they trust. So that's why a casting director is a good idea. Um, there's also like online resources that I will not name. They're not, they're okay. Uh, they're the kind of sites where you post your project and you say how much you're going to pay because you think you're saving money, but in reality, you're going to screw yourself out of tons of money in the end because the talent that you're going to get is uh, going to cost more than you thought. Um, but, you know, you, you can do that and you can do the research if you want. I'm just not going to recommend it. Lastly, there's also shoestring methods. There's, um, you know, your friends and Craigslist and uh, local theater groups. Uh, it can work sometimes. Uh, again, it's going to be way more time and money than you originally thought. Uh, and sometimes it works. I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't, but 
if you hire a professional, it's uh, pretty much guaranteed that it's going to work. So I'm going to soapbox for a second. Not like I haven't been doing that the whole time. But um, audiences are becoming much more informed, uh, especially when it comes to our games and our, uh, and our voices in them. And they can be very forgiving about graphics and gameplay and many other things. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but sound is the only real world asset in the game, especially voice. So when you screw up voice or sound, but most importantly, voice, <laughs> you really screw up. And the player has a very low threshold for, uh, for, for, for giving you any amount of leniency on that. So very important to uh, to think about that up front when you're figuring out how to pinch pennies. So congratulations. You've got yourself a uh, bunch of auditions to go through. Um, who's right for your game? Well, that's uh, up to you. And I mean you, not your fans, not the people on Kickstarter, not the people on Twitter. It's up to you, the game designer and the game audio designer and the game casting director to make that choice. What's a really bad idea is to pick somebody that you think is cool for the role and then to cast them, and then they're totally not the right actor for the role. Uh, never happened to me. <laughs> uh, also, check their experience. Actors, just like audio people and every other discipline, have specialties. I mean, uh, a lot of times people will make the mistake of, uh, and not necessarily a mistake, but it takes a very skilled director to get it done right, uh, to take an on-screen actor and to put them in a VO booth. Well, most on-screen actors have only been on a VO booth to do ADR, uh, which is like looping their own performances. They haven't done creative voice work where they're getting a picture in their head and they're performing to it. So not every TV actor or film actor is going to be able to do that. Their standard practice working is having the script that they read their pages like right before they go on and then they go and they deliver their roles. Sometimes they read them ahead and, and get them, but that's why theatrical actors are very good for this. Um, maybe they've done some video games, but they were in Simlish and you're directing XCOM. That never happened to me. Uh, <laughs> so just check their experience and make sure that it's right for your game. Um, let's see. Oh, also, uh, you want to be uh, aware of their availabilities, too. So if they're doing TV or theater, make sure that they're going to be available three days before CERT uh, <laughs> to do their pickups and not at a price check in, in Mexico. <sighs> so, so now that you've got a cast, uh, you have to record them. <laughs> Uh, uh, first stop, find a studio. I know this is really rudimentary, but I'm trying to give you guys tips through like really dumbass uh, <laughs> explanations. Find a studio that's close to your talent, not to you. It's way cheaper to fly yourself to the studio than to fly all of your talent to you. Uh, there's that. Also, surprise, VO is not music. <laughs> right? That's a weird one, right? Uh, what that means... <laughs> <laughs> what that means is that that beautiful studio that you have in mind with the Neve console and all the vintage API gear and the awesome tube microphones and the compressors and the bells and whistles and synthesizers, uh, that's not your studio. You want the cleanest, most transparent signal path possible. Uh, find studios that have John Hardy M1s or GMLs uh, and a U87, and that's pretty much it. Um, what you also, <laughs> on the flip side of that, there's a lot of studios that are sad, that are dedicated VO studios, uh, that have these dead, lifeless coffin rooms where talent goes to suffer and die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like those, <laughs> clearly. Uh, they usually have, uh, pretty easy to identify. They have lots of pointy foam objects in them and a 416 uh, pointed at the actor. Um, here's a good way to figure this out. Walk into a room, do the clap test. If it sounds like a clap, that's a good room. If it sounds like some sort of weird fart, <laughs> don't book that studio. Uh, I did a fart joke at GDC. Again. <laughs> 
Look for uh, look for large rooms. Uh, uh, it's gonna help. Uh, it's gonna help with the sound. It's also gonna help uh, I, I, if you're very comfortable with the engineer. Like uh, I've spent a lot of years building up really good support teams. I direct from inside the booth. It really helps with the actor director relationship to be able to give them that sort of confidence. Um, you know what? Here's another good test. Walk into the room. If it makes you feel inspired and creative and empowered, guess what? It's going to help the actor to do that, too. Amazing! I know. Pearls of wisdom. Let's talk about scripts for a second. We're going to go on a metaphor adventure here. Um, let's say you have a favorite tool that you like to work with. We'll uh, use a screwdriver for this metaphor, right? Every day you go to work, you use a screwdriver. You are really, really good at screwing. Now let's say you get hired for... Oh, I should have rewrote that. <laughs> Now let's say you get hired for a job and your new boss says, oh, buddy, we don't use screwdrivers here, but here's a hammer, uh, you know, to use on those screws. Uh, same thing happens when we give Excel spreadsheets to actors who are used to seeing theatrically formatted scripts. Man, does that blow a session. They won't tell you. Actors will not tell you what makes them uncomfortable in the booth. They're happy to be there and they will do anything in their power to please you. Um, so it's your job to learn about acting and to uh, and to make them comfortable. One more thing, when you give them their beautifully theatrically formatted scripts, for God's sake, put the previous line and some context into the scripts so that the actors can read it and get it in their hands at least two days before the session if you can. Even if it's even if it's dry, like mocked copy, get it in their hands. It'll help. All right, for working with talent, you need to remember a few golden rules. Actors, surprisingly, are neither parrots nor magicians, except for some of the magicians that I work with. <sighs> <laughs> the best way to break an actor, and not in like a stallion sort of way, just more of a sad, broken person sort of way, <laughs> is to beat them down and every nuance of their performance to get it the way that it sounds in your head. You hired professionals to collaborate with, listen to them, trust them. But on the flip side, they're not working on the game nearly as closely as you are. You're going to need to give them context and direction. Uh, come to my talk on Thursday at 11, and I'll give you a master class in directing if you're interested. But basically, really quick... Give the actors some time to get the line right. If they don't get it on the first try, give them two more. And if they don't get it on the third one, give them a little help, an adjective. It's not until the fourth or fifth that you really want to get in there and be like, okay, let's figure out what's going on. Especially if it's a short, it's a long line, then clearly help them out. But, um, but yeah, just give the actors some space to do their jobs. So on that point, your job in the studio as a director or as a session runner is to create a bubble around the actor. Your job is to protect them from the producer and the writer and the engineer and the coffee person and the script person and everybody else. That's your job to deal with them. You are running the session. You are not there to make the actor uncomfortable by making them privy to all of that. That said, what that doesn't mean is take the talkback loop off. Because what happens when you take the talkback loop off? The actor is now in isolation. <laughs> this is what the actor sees on the other side of the glass. And you're saying, I don't want meatballs for lunch. We had it yesterday. I want to. Yeah, that's pretty much what happens in a studio. Or did you see that YouTube clip? I know it was crazy. What is he thinking? The actor will immediately think, oh my God, this guy's terrible. Why did we hire him? Get him out of the booth as fast as possible. That's actor psychology for you. I, okay, now I lost my place. I went on a tangent. It happens. Go on this trip with me, man. All right. Um, lastly, have a vision for what you want your game to sound like and communicate it effectively. I know it sounds stupid, but you can go either way with this. You can have no idea what you want your game to sound like. Be like, I don't know, the writer wanted something. Read your scripts, man. Have a vision. That's, you're, you're a creative professional. Jesus. <laughs> that's that, that's stump. That's uh, me on my stump. Okay. 
All right. Lastly, uh, if all this seems really daunting, there's a plethora of professionals that are here at your beck and call. Even if you want to just call up and ask for some advice, most of us are really approachable human beings. Uh, some of us have even worked in-house at game studios before. There's voice directors who will come in and work with your talent with you if you're uncomfortable having that relationship. There's casting directors that will find awesome talent for you. Voice production houses that will do soup to nuts. Uh, script supervisors that'll come and help you groom your scripts and get them treated for the for, for the studio. Uh, editorial and mastering engineers who are going to get it to sound way better than you will. Uh, most of you, I don't, I don't know what your skill level is. Uh, that's basically it. That's my talk. I wanted to leave room for Q and A. We've got a couple minutes. Uh, let's get some questions going. Please line up at the microphone. You can pretty much ask me anything. Uh, everyone is invited to talk and uh, ask questions, including the CAs, who uh, who I know uh, are just jumping at the bit to ask me to shut up. On that note, uh, please don't forget to thank your volunteers and fill out your surveys. Uh, I recommend high fiving CAs at any point you get, unless they're like weird about hand stuff. Um, <laughs> lastly, uh, just to plug my own thing, uh, at the, at the, uh, if you want a more boots on the ground, look at actually like running sessions, come to my talk on Thursday where I basically turn this room. Well, not this room, turn the room into a live recording situation. It's called VO session live. I show the pro tools rig. I show you how we pull down takes and we have volunteers from the audience come up and run different script scenarios. Thank you. That was me. Hi, first question. Hi. Um, I was curious, uh, specifically as you were talking about um, being in the studio with the talent, um, any thoughts or extra wisdom you might have for dialogue or group talk sessions where you may want to have multiple actors, if possible, in the same space so that they can riff off of each other on their lines? I absolutely recommend it. Anytime you have two characters in your video game that talk to each other, and if you want a very detailed explanation of that, either revisit the uh, talks that I've done in the past uh, that detail ensemble uh, voice production, or come to the talk on Thursday where I'm going to run through ensemble scripts and show you exactly how to do just that. Thank you for that. Awesome. Good call. <laughs> Thursday, 3 o'clock. Hi. Hi, my question is... 11 um, o'clock, sorry. 11 <laughs> 30. whatever it says. <laughs> my question is, um, when you have, we're working in an indie game and you have no budget and they're forcing you, the sound person, to be the actor as well, um, how do you prepare to that if you have no experience in voice acting at all? If you have no experience in voice acting at all and you have no budget and you are also expected to be the voice talent, was that the... Yes. Um... Didn't the behemoth do that? And didn't that come out freaking awesome? Yeah, do the best job you can, man. All right. Uh, I, I, so, so uh, my rec I'm sorry, that was a really dumb answer. Uh, <laughs> um, so two tips on acting. Uh, one, just lose all your inhibitions. Like seriously, just, just throw them out because they're useless in the studio. All of them. Uh, and secondly, if, uh, if you want, there are totally awesome resources for, uh, for, uh, for, for learning acting, uh, in your, either, where, where do you live? Columbia. Cool. I don't know about Columbia. I'm guessing that there are, <laughs> there are none. Okay. Uh, do you don't have like, you, you don't have like a local theater or, uh, or, or actors. Have you seen soap operas? Have you seen our soap operas? See. <laughs> they're bad. They're absolutely horrible. Si, si, tu es emperazar. Yeah. It is exactly like that. I don't know what that means, but man, is it funny. <laughs> All right, um, come talk to me in the wrap-up room, and I'll give you some actual... Awesome, sorry. thank you so much. <laughs> hey, I don't know if this is too personal of a question, but... Sure. Like, and all throughout the talk, you seem to have these little bouts of vitriol, just like the random crap that happens to you. I'm wondering in particular, like, what is the worst, like, snafu that's happened in your career that you can think of off the top of your head? Actor showed up at 9 o'clock in the morning high out of her fucking mind, but she was a celebrity and there was nothing we could do about it. <laughs> And so she was there for four hours? And she had to do combat that day. Oh, God. <laughs> Great. Best of luck. John. Hello. Okay, so uh, we've talked a lot about 
uh, recording in a studio, but say you're working on a project that's a very, very low budget project and you have to work with actors who are remote, who have their own home studios. Oh. What kind of advice would you offer in a situation like that? <laughs> Firstly, I would uh, have them do test audio with their auditions from their recording environment to make sure their recording environment is uh, is compatible with the other actors that you have uh, that you have gotten to work on your project. Secondly, you can do low budget, uh, even no budget uh, 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 auditioning in within one city. Uh, pick one and do it, or pick two if you're bold. Gotcha. Um, I would uh, point out that most actors, a lot of actors in major cities like L.A., New York, Chicago, uh, they have personal home recording studios that are pretty okay. If they don't and you really love them, uh, you could always uh, broach the subject of maybe we could do better with your recording setup and maybe send them some articles on how to set up a, a, a little blanket fort to record in. So cool. that's the best I can offer, man. Curiosity. Thank you very much. Cool. I am done, but I will be in the wrap-up room. Uh, so please come visit me in the wrap-up room, or else I will feel lonely and it's cold in there. And the more people that get there, the more BTUs we shed, and the more we can hug. <laughs> Bye.